Today we begin our first broadcast of Fridays with seniors, and uh, but the people that I'm interviewing today are far from seniors, but are responsible for what they do. And uh, thank you so much for being here. Allow me to introduce each one of them individually. And I think I've got your titles right, uh, all from New Westminster. Anna, how do I say that last name and where is it from? Uh, I know her medic. And uh, it's a Bosnian, Bosnian name and last name. Okay. And housing and childcare planning analyst for the city of New Westminster. Uh, Jennifer, how do I say your last name? Uh, Joel Tama. And you're the assistant deputy fire chief? Correct, uh, one, of, one of a couple, yes. There's two, okay. A city of New Westminster, fire and rescue services. Uh, Corey Hansen, emergency planning assistant. And Christy Bruce, fire inspector, public educator. Thank you all for being here. And I know what, what you will share today will be invaluable to our audience. So let me start with you, uh, Anna. Can you tell me a little about why we're talking about emergency preparedness and why this is so important? Absolutely. And uh, thank you for, for this opportunity. Um, as I've mentioned, I'll just provide a bit of a background. I am the affordable housing and child care planning analyst and senior in training, but I'm also part of our city's community planning team. And really within community planning, we work directly with the community, including lived, uh, seniors with lived and living experience, community social service organizations like the Senior Service Society, and with all, all different levels of government. And we work to identify issues in a way that's supportive, inquiring, and analytical, and really meet the needs of what we find in the community. And a really a good community planning project is one where we uh, create immediate uh, products such as emergency pl uh, planning tools, but also increase capacity. So we've seen that emergency preparedness is a perfect example of such work because it is a growing need. Uh, as we saw this summer, seniors in British Columbia are increasingly susceptible to emergency situations caused by climate change and severe weather events. And this was particularly highlighted by extreme heat. Uh, this was made evident during the event in the June of 2021, where we saw an extreme heat dome in the region, which claimed the lives, lives of many seniors in this city and the region as a whole. And there's also an evidence that seniors living in independent residence are, are particularly uh, vulnerable to these types of emergency situations often uh, independent living residents that are serving frail and low income seniors in particular. So this is an issue that's uh, very important for us to tackle in a collaborative way. I do also wanna mention that one crucial uh, factor that underlines all of this is that the more socially isolated senior residents are, the more vulnerable they are in such emergency situations. So I'll highlight again that the importance of that collaborative approach. We do work with the City Senior Service Society and the Seniors Housing Collaborative. Uh, the Senior Services Society is very important in this work because they support seniors who are homeless or at risk of homelessness. And one of their initiatives is the Seniors Housing Collaborative, which is working to shift housing policy for seniors renters, as well as the ability for them to age in the right place and thrive. And our city's fire and uh, rescue department is also important in this emergency preparedness work uh, because they have the direct means to a lot of the best practice uh, work and information. Um, so. With that, I'll highlight that is, it is our pleasure to be working together with both the community organizations and your fire and rescue team and uh, highlighting this very important problem, which has become a priority for so many of these departments and community organizations. How many seniors live in, the, uh, let's say the newest with the community? So I do have some stats, uh, particularly on seniors, uh, how many live alone and what makes them particularly vulnerable. Um, that, that's information I can specifically add. I didn't prepare the exact number of seniors, but I can certainly speak to some of the vulnerabilities, particularly seniors who live alone, as I've mentioned, or seniors who are living with disabilities. Both. Both. So uh, our most available data that was available in 2016 from StatsCan, uh, Statistics Canada, showed that about 35.7% of all seniors in New West uh, live alone which is a total of 3,600 seniors. So that's about one third of seniors live alone. And the highest rate of seniors living alone by age group was 85 years and older. And that's about one in two seniors. So half of the seniors over the age of 85 live alone, highlighting that significant vulnerability. 
I would also mention that in 2016, we also learned that approximately one fifth of all seniors had some form of a disability. And disabilities can include a number of things, including pain to cognitive, sight and hearing. Uh, approximately one in five of those had mobility related disabilities, uh, which is the second most common disability amongst BC seniors. So we have uh, to highlight a large number of seniors, about uh, one third living alone, and of those, one fifth have a mobility disability, highlighting that real challenge. And specifically, if I can mention one more thing about the city of New West, we do have a significant number, so about 7% who do not know English well enough to converse, so English not being the first language, which is another important statistic and vulnerability we want to um, include in this work around emergency preparedness. So uh, I, I think I heard you right. You said about 3,000 seniors live in New York. Uh, sorry, 3,600. Um, so that's one third of the seniors um, are living alone. So that about just under 10,000 seniors in, in the city of New Westminster. So how many of those would have been raised here versus how many of that, those 10,000 odd would have moved here? That's a good question. I don't have that level of, of data available, but I would me will mention that seniors who do live in the city uh, reside in uh, multi-unit buildings um, as renters uh, who have been there for a, a while now because those represent some of our most affordable housing units um, because uh, they were built in the 60s, 70s, and 80s when uh, rent was um, relatively uh, affordable uh, and there's subsidies from senior levels of government. So many of the seniors that we do see uh, living in the city in our affordable multi-unit buildings have been in the city for a significant amount of time. Okay. Jen, what is the biggest role you play in this? Well, as a assistant deputy chief uh, overseeing uh, emergency management, um, my role is to uh, report back up through our fire chief to our senior management team in uh, in the city to ensure that we are hitting all the marks that we need to to ensure we support the seniors um, and their and their needs as uh, Anur has uh, highlighted with with respect to emergency management. So, are you specifically charged with the seniors? Or is that just part of your responsibility? That's part of my, one of my responsibilities, but we do have uh, a, a strong emergency management division in which Corey takes a, a strong lead in um, on various topics, not just uh, supporting the seniors. Well, Corey, tell me why is emergency preparedness and what, is it, what does it really mean? So emergency preparedness, um, basically you look at it, we can have anything happen anywhere without warning. So we can have flooding, we had the extreme cold this winter. Uh, we can also have events like our heat dome last year, which are very important. And it's about people taking action and helping out their communities um, and how people cope. So basically any sort of advanced preparation that anyone can do will help them cope in an emergency. Um, there's additional needs to consider, especially being older adults, such as medical requirements, do they have disabilities, um, and do they have access to transportation? So starting, uh, once you become a senior, you, you need to adapt to these um, expectations that you need help probably when you're doing these things and looking at them moving forward. So most, most cities and organize, uh, most cities and like local jurisdictions and that do have a senior center or do have some place where they can grab this information uh, that's including a senior services society um, or the local municipality will have this information that they can get uh, further, further details about. I presume you have confidential files on all of the, uh, the seniors that reside in New Westminster so that you can access them pretty quickly. Uh, we don't have confidential personal files, no, but we have plans put in place if there was to be an emergency, specific speaking to more like weather, um, evacuations in certain areas and that, um, and also like our heat, we have heat planning taking place right at the very moment because heat is a great issue in our city. Uh, we saw over 40 degrees last year and that, that may be the temperature outside, but the temperature inside can we know can be a lot hotter than that and a lot of seniors don't realize that. So um, we don't have file specific, but we do have more the planning and preparedness role that we take on. And Christy, what is your, I see your New Westminster Fire Rescue. 
do you specifically deal with the seniors uh, in your responsibilities? Uh, no, I deal with any of the community, community members in the city, um, community outreach, outreach for the young and the old and everyone in between. Um, we're just working on this as one of our one of our projects right now. How can the people watching and listening help you? What can they do? They can be part of the community. They can be the network that we all need to be a part of. And because if we don't really care for our seniors, there really isn't any future for the young people. So we all need to remember now that we're all, we're all going to be in in a different place in decades to come. So looking after our senior today will help make sure there's a future for all of us. So it just means being connected daily through love and care and kindness and reminders and, and uh, support. Other than health, is there one natural uh, thing such as uh, extreme weather that uh, could affect seniors? Jen, you might like to answer that. Yeah, yeah. So um, as we saw last year that we mentioned before on climate change, we have uh, some unexpected and unusual or severe weather that we maybe haven't even seen in, in uh, history's past. Um, our, uh, our last uh, heat wave, which I'm sure most people who are in BC or Lower Mainland remember, um, it was the deadliest weather event in Canadian history. Um, so for us, the, the heat related um, um, deaths and, and injuries um, became uh, apparent. And uh, between uh, June 18th and August 21st, um, the whole province had 595 heat related deaths. Um, we confirmed through the coroner service that sadly um, New Westminster residents lost their lives and that was 28 of them and it's called hyperthermia, which means an eleva elevated body temperature. Um, these were the people who were living alone that Anur uh, related to or spoke about the 3000 and no working air conditioners or fans. Um, their residences um, were built, as he said, in the 60s and air conditioning wasn't a part of it. So many of these would have been uh, preventable uh, with some advanced planning, coordination and some more outreach efforts like uh, Inspector Bruce has said with regards to, you know, connecting with your neighbors and uh, seniors that you're aware of. Um, so we, so basically the, the province has identified that individuals age 70 plus accounted for 69% of those deaths in our province. Wow. So do you, do you get uh, daily calls that you're expected to uh, service? Yeah, so um, from, a, from a medical uh, perspective, um, we are, we do receive daily calls. It's, uh, we are asked to attend um, by BC Emergency Health Services. Um, so the ambulance service, they field the, the calls in and uh, we attend um, to the patients as, as best we can and provide updates to BC Ambulance until they can arrive. So does New Westminster have, um, not disproportionately, but maybe do, do, they, do they have more seniors uh, per population that they in New Westminster there are in other cities in, in this uh, in this province, and if so, why? So I can just mention that um, the point I was making earlier about there is evidence that New West has a large proportion of their seniors living in uh, independent living residence. Uh, particularly serving low um, low income and vulnerable situations because we do have a large proportion of affordable older buildings uh, which were built in the 60s, 70s and 80s. So this is through our community planning research uh, been found to be a significant uh, uh, area that we do need to concentrate on. So a large proportion of senior renters uh, living in residence. And why this is so important for us is because independent living residents where seniors may reside are not staffed the same way uh, as long-term care facilities. They may have an on-site manager who's responsible for the building itself, but not necessarily the well-being of the tenants. Um, and those that are occupying the, ten uh, the tenancies uh, may need assistance to maintain their independence. Um, and in most cases, we found that they have not developed their own um, uh, emergency preparedness plans and procedures. So um, 
we, we can speak to it. We are looking at some uh, pilot projects in the city that are looking to build that capacity within these um, living residences. And I know that uh, Christy is, is quite aware of one of them if she'd like to, to add that as well. Christy, sure, sure. Why, why don't you, why don't you uh, tell us what kind of programs uh, can make a difference? Uh, well, honestly, any program can make a difference. Um, but what the main thing, being key, key component to a program is it has to be sustainable long term. We can't just do something for a few months or one or two years. It needs to take on a life of its own after it gets up and running. Uh, the one main project that we're starting with right now is called the uh, Seniors Integrated Support Pilot Project. And that's a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> um, so it's a collaborative project between the city and our Senior Services Society, as well as the Connect and Prepare program. It's a two-year pilot project program. Uh, it's located right now at the Ross Tower, which hosts many independent senior, senior citizens especially those living with increased health matters and or on a lower income. Uh, so these programs are, they, they offer services, housing support, uh, they offer shuttle services, meal deliveries, housekeeping services. Um, so when we work with them, they, get, they can tell us which seniors are gonna be more in the need of having those uh, the real key pieces and having the connections in the event of a, of a heat, extreme heat um, wave. And uh, so we mentioned that it is an integrated approach with the Senior Service Society, which will be uh, delivering um, meal deliveries, shuttle services, navigation assistance, so form filling housing supports, because it takes so many different elements to make sure that senior residents are um, aging in the right place and thriving. And the city is really directly involved through that emergency preparedness piece. Uh, we are looking at the Connect and Prepare uh, program because we're recognizing that uh, a significant priority to emergency preparedness is social connectedness. We've had a member of our Seniors Housing Collaborative um, lose a friend of 22 years uh, in this last extreme heat. And he was very grateful that we're, um, uh, that this podcast is centering on this topic. And he was mentioning that just by knocking on the door of the neighborhood uh, or knowing how your neighbors are doing uh, could save lives. So recognizing that emergency preparedness is very tied to social connectedness. Uh, so Ross Tower is an example of a building with a large proportion of seniors um, uh, who are living alone. And where we see that as an opportunity to scale to different buildings in the city of New Westminster with, uh, with similar conditions. So this is why we've chosen Ross Tower as a pilot project for this integrated support, including emergency preparedness. And I'd, I'd like to just sort of add, there's also other programs that can make a difference too. So in the city, when we do have like heat and that, um, that does take over our city and those temperatures do start to rise, we do activate cooling centers. We are out there providing water to these people and that as well, uh, making sure that they are supported. And, um, and the Senior Services Society this year of BC is looking at providing um, working fans to older adults, uh, which takes, but this takes a lot of funding and coordination. They're in the process of it now. So it's something that we're all trying to find different avenues in order to help seniors and that. But the main king thing is that they create these social networks themselves um, and that they can help, they can help each other out by getting to help their neighbors and that too. So that's one thing that we, we think as a program is definitely something that's effective as well. Well, Craig, what are the top three things you'd like people to know about this? The top three things for, for me, the keyword is preparedness. So we want to, we want to make sure that people, people are checking on their neighbors. They have extra supplies. There's, there's a phrase in, in the emergency management world that is, um, that is basically know the, know the risks, make a plan and get a kit. So know your risks, basically that whether you're following the news and you see heat is coming um, or you see flooding or you see extended periods of cold is coming, um, make a plan with your family, identify with them, say, who is your out-of-province contact if we have an earthquake? Do you have someone to talk to? Do you talk to your family regularly? If you have no one to talk to, knock on your neighbor's door, can make friends with them. Um, you use people in your network to help build you up and, and help build uh, you stronger, especially if you do have mobility issues or you have some sort of disability in that as well. Just use your network that you do have and make a kit. You need to be prepared. Have those extra supplies that you can go out and gather. I know supplies are expensive and when the way our economy and everything is building right now, things are getting more expensive, but having extra canned food, 
like a couple extra bottles of water, having extra batteries with your flashlight. And that is things that you do need. I know from a fire department standpoint and that too, it's not just emergency preparedness, but if that fire alarm goes off in your building and that we want you to be prepared. So having, having a bag ready to go with some of your extra medication, a jacket in it, which is key, especially in the colder days, uh, maybe a pair of shoes in that too. And for women, we always like to carry our purse with us. So don't forget your purse as well is evacuate the building, but make sure you're also prepared to do that as well. Is there a list of these uh, items uh, that are available to each of these, uh, these ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, so in New Westminster, we have we have these lists on our city websites and that um, the, the province of BC actually has a website called Get Prepared, uh, Get Prepared BC, and they have lots of lists of stuff that you can have. And I know Senior Services Society of BC also, uh, or of New Westminster also has lists, but any Senior Services Society will be able to help you out. And I'm sure any lo uh, local city would be able to help you out if you approach them in their emergency management office. Um, before we get done, can you help me understand why exactly four young people like you would do this. That's very impressive. It's easy to say it's your job, but there has to be something beyond that. Well, you know, Christy is a, is a, is a New West resident and uh, maybe, you know, you can talk about your sort of outreach and your beliefs. Sure. Um, again, it's really, my community is is the heart of my life so whether i'm living or working here we really do need to be part of this community um, helping each other out whether it's just to lend a hand or lend a smile um, and to make the connections because as the saying goes you know, we are always better together really we we're stronger together um, get our our strength from working together not from being alone and um, there is something to remember about independent seniors is that they love being independent. They don't think they need to rely on anybody else. Um, well, so if, if you're an adult um, with senior parents, it's okay to gift them like emergency packs. That's what my parents got for Christmas this year. They got a <laughs> knapsack for their car filled with, filled with like supplies. I'm going to keep adding to it. And my mother-in-law got one too. And they, they always keep meaning to do these things and they're independent. They want to do it themselves. And I just gave them a head start. I just gave them a little bit of stuff to work on. And uh, so again, it is a working together and, you know, uh, making sure that no one's going to be left alone and, mm -hmm. you know, you talk to them, make sure you know your neighbor's medical background even. So if you see them deteriorating, you understand what's happening. Well, you help them make their network of people. You help them get connected with other people and you follow up with them, making sure they are getting where they need to go or seeing who they need to, need to be seeing. And um, yeah, it, it's okay to be independent, but it's okay to ask for help, which we all need that reminder sometimes. I need that reminder to ask for more help sometimes. I've often wondered what drew the four of you individually at different times, I'm assuming, to this profession? Oh. <laughs> to this profession. Well, you know, um, you get into a profession like this because you, you do want to help people. Um, and it was extremely hard. I can't speak for everybody else, but to, to see um, our residents um, last year and, and the impact it had on them and the sad loss of 28 of our, our residents. Um, so that kind of is part of what keeps myself um, going and interested in and wanting to help. So that, that, that's kind of why you get into the business of either first responders or emergency management, or in a newer case, as a, as a social planner. Um, Christy says it best, we're better together. And the diversity of people, including all age groups is so important. We can learn so much from our seniors as well and from being connected with our seniors. Um, they maybe have some experience in some of this stuff back in, back in the, that we don't have and hear those stories to help us make better plans. Okay. Uh, I can <clears throat> Sorry. I'll, I'll let you go ahead, Corey. No, it's okay. Um, okay. So I came from um, I came from a background. My parents were both my parents were both police officers, actually. In that, so I'd hear different stories around the dinner table and whatnot. And I actually came 
Um, before I came into it, my role in emergency management, I actually worked at e-com taking 911 calls. So I actually got calls from a lot of seniors who were in need of help um, and need of support in that. And some of the calls that stick out to me the most are ones that they didn't have a social connectedness to anybody. They didn't have their neighbors to help them. And when you asked if they had someone they can reach out to or phone, a lot of the answers were no. Um, so it led me sort of down a path, um, of wanting to help people a little bit further and that, um, and emergency management, what for me was a field of, I can help educate the public and educate different people further of how to make a plan, how to get a kit and build these plans out. So we can help a greater, a greater need of people, um, for the greater good and that. So seniors are a big part of this and that, and a big part of new Westminster, but really we're helping, we are helping everybody and that as well. And for myself, um, I've been with the city now for 13 years and we just continue to grow and get better. But a lot of our focus is on our vulnerable population and that, and I think it's key. To, these are the people that we need to look after now and that uh, we need, and we need to inspire this into our youth and we need to keep moving forward with this too. If I could just mention why I um, I really believe in the work of uh, that we do in community planning or social planning, uh, which we talk about, is really because of my own lived experience. I came to Canada uh, when I was a, a young boy with my family uh, and really benefited from, you know, I grew up in Burnaby and I used City of New West resources and really benefited from community um, organizations, um, community centers to learn uh, skills uh, such as English, um, how to get into university, um, and I really believe uh, in what the community can do for each other. So the way I learned English to be able to, uh, to thrive here, I, I, I believe that uh, work like emergency preparedness uh, and a lot of the other things we do at the city's uh, community team is so essential to what makes a community a community. Uh, and above all, we are all seniors in training. Uh, we have parents who are we're seniors, who are senior renters. Uh, so this touches all of us. Um, it's, uh, and I also believe in the tenant of working with the community, uh, including residents with lived and living experience to really see what are the needs uh, because in community planning and fire and, and rescue, we don't know everything that's in the community. So if we lend the ability to connect with everyone and include in how we're um, structuring our priorities, I think that makes us a stronger community and emergency preparedness has certainly come out as one of those priorities. Who should people contact if they want to get more information about emergency preparedness? Uh, in, in New Westminster, you anybody. Can contact, or, anybody, yeah, actually that's a good answer too. Anybody pretty much, but in New Westminster, you can contact our emergency management office um, or through our fire department. Um, and I know our Senior Services Society has information about emergency management and emergency planning and that as well. And I know our Noor and his team are, are very good at that too. So there's a, a lot of avenues that we can look at, but um, our city's website and that as well has that information. And if you're not from New Westminster, check out your Senior Services Society in your jurisdiction um, and your emergency management office in your city as well. Well, let's go, let's start with, uh, with you, Christy, okay. and then we'll go to Corey and Jen and uh, Anur. Why exactly do you do this? Why do I do this? Um, you need to say it's your job, but it has to it be is, more than that. It is, it is who I am as well. Uh, so spending many years uh, as a first responder, as a firefighter and getting to go to those emergencies and helping people out um, was very, was a very giving um very um, um uh it felt good to serve mm -hmm. and being able not to do that anymore um for different reasons and like jen said earlier seeing people uh, at their worst and or passing in the heat wave and not being able to do anything was quite um you felt you felt useless so being able now to be part of a project to help prepare these seniors and help prepare their neighbors to help their 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 seniors out in their neighborhoods or communities is at least something we can try to do. Um, I also receive calls from seniors regarding other matters and I take the time to connect with them finding out what they need and you know and who else I can connect them with so it's nice being able to give back to the community, not because I have to, but it truly is what I want to do. It is who I am. Corey. 
I agree with Christy. It's what, kind of what I want to do as well as that whole give back is giving back to the community and that um, it's one of those things that in New Westminster, we're a very small oriented community in that and everybody knows everybody. But I think even in general, you don't have to live in New Westminster, but we want to help. We want, we want to help serve those people and help make sure they have somewhere to go, especially in an emergency or disaster. I always think of the worst case scenario and, and how are we going to help, how are we going to help people in buildings and that as well? And the biggest thing I can suggest is encouraging everyone to have that plan and emergency um, and having a kit, having food and that and shelter and water for up to 72 hours like that. It's kind of become my passion now. And kind of, I want to just express that to everybody is, we have emergencies and climate change that is happening almost daily now. Uh, we can see from the flooding in Abbotsford and that in the fall and now with the heat and that we had last year and then we had almost minus 20 temperatures this year and that too, it's cold. So being that little more prepared and if I can spread that message more, um, including seniors and that too and helping them prepare, um, that's that just, it, help, it helps us get better as a, as a city in that too. Jen. I think, um, you know, as I reflect while Christy and Corey was talking, the reason um, I think I do this is uh, I, I found an ability to be able to sort of organize and, and take away some things that other people can't do. So my strengths are in organization and, and outreach um, and seeing problems and trying to sort of gather people together and come up with solutions. And uh, I always feel sort of a calling to, to help someone. I can never sort of walk by somebody who looks like they might be struggling. And that's kind of, you know, another message. It's not just our seniors, but we tend to sort of walk around people and instead, you know, take that moment to look at those people and say, you know, hi, how are you doing? Do you, do you need anything if they look in trouble? Um, it can be intimidating, but fortunately, you know, for me, I feel confident enough to be able to do that. So I think um, kind of reflected upon what my skills were and uh, to help others do what they need to do um, to help others. So it, it really is, uh, it's ingrained in you, I think, certain people who kind of are drawn to helping. It's certainly, you know, not uh, somewhere to go and make a lot of money. Um, but my first experience uh, with uh, seniors in particular it was uh, as a candy striper. And uh, it was so rewarding to help um, my ward was um, seniors uh, with some ch uh, cognitive uh, challenges, and it was so rewarding to be able to actually make a difference in their day, or at least I felt like I did, um, by having conversations, hearing their lived experiences, and being able to sort of absorb that and apply it to um, my day-to-day -day, um, work. And the last word to you, Nora. Great, thank you. And I've had a little bit of time to reflect here as, uh, as everybody was uh, sharing their story. And I once heard a, a, a statement that, that really struck with me in that a walk in the woods is interesting when you're alone until you hear the first noise in the wood and realize you'd rather be in a group. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that really um, resonates with so much of what I do. And the other thing is um, around community planning. The other thing is um, I owe a lot to my experience of, of coming to, to Canada, to Burnaby, to New Westminster in particular, as I mentioned earlier, um, and, and to my father really, who when we came here really included me in community centers. And I got so many supports around English supports, uh, employment, uh, scholarships, volunteerism. I volunteered with the Boys and Girls Club and realized that very thing that we're stronger as a group, which is a, a big tenant in, in uh, our community planning. Um, and I've always wanted to work in municipal government because I feel that this is the greatest opportunity to do the most good because we have tools to connect with the community, but to also make uh, impacts um, directly. And the city of New Westminster always struck me and it is, it's a small city with a big heart. And the reason we are able to do so much is because we have those wonderful collaborative um, relationships with our so social service organizations, uh, with our residents, uh, particularly the Senior Service Society, the Seniors Housing Collaborative, with those individuals with lived and living experience that can share their story. And ultimately we become stronger as a group as we're walking through the woods. And these woods is, you know, to be symbolic is there's different challenges coming forward, whether it's emergency preparedness, whether it's COVID. And this work that we do in community planning really is centered on that. Uh, we are stronger together. So I believe it both from my own experience, but also the experience of what I find to be best for us as a, as a community. Well, thank you very much. I, I think the, one thing that you said or somebody said 
that we're all moving towards every day we're moving towards being a senior ourselves mm -hmm. and so for us to be aware of what you four are doing uh is vital and the fact this service is available uh, hopefully in many other communities throughout this province but certainly in new westminster and as a former resident of new westminster an immigrant to this great uh, city of new westminster I'm honored to have uh, had the privilege to interview you all today, to hear your story and to hear what is going on. And hopefully you have felt that your uh, words uh, have, have been uh, listened to and will be listened to in the weeks and months ahead. So thank you so much and God bless you for everything that you do. Thank you very thank much. You. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you.